In this video, I have X-Rite i1 Studio devices with me. Particularly, there are two devices that fall into the i1 Studio category. One of them is the i1 Display Studio. This is a colorimeter that will only do calibration for display and projectors. And the other device here, this is the i1 Studio. Amazing enough, it carries the same name as the software that we'll be using to do the calibration here, which is also called i1 Studio. This is a color spectral photometer. That means that it will calibrate display projectors and it will also do printer profiling as well. For this video, what I'm going to do is walk you through how you can use these class of devices, the i1 Studio devices, to run a calibration on your external display or any display for this matter that is not built into your machine. I'm Art Suwansang, x Right Colorati. Let's get started. Before we start, please subscribe if you're new and hit on the notification bell so we update it every time I upload cool new guides like this. All right, so for this video, as I mentioned before, I have the x i one Display Studio, which is a colorimeter, and the x i one Studio, which is a color spectrophotometer. What I'm going to use here is BenQ 32-inch display. This is their PD3220U. It is a 4K display. This display is part of BenQ professional design line, and it is not capable of hardware calibration. One thing that you want to note too is that if you have a display that is capable of hardware calibration, what you want to do is use the manufacturer's software to run the calibration. The advantage of having a hardware calibrated display is that all the adjustment when you run the calibration is done at the panel level. In this case, once we are done creating the profile, what we're going to do is generate an ICC profile. That ICC profile is going to remap the colors that are coming out from our video card in order to correct it to it in the color gamut that we have chosen. A couple of things to note here is that if you have the x i one Display Studio, this device is locked into x Right software ecosystem and i1 Studio software only. That means you cannot use any third-party software with this device. This is something different than the full-fledged i1 Studio color spectrophotometer. This device is open to third-party. And for instance, this device, this big color spectrophotometer here, you can also use this with BenQ Palette Master Elements software to run a calibration on their screen. This is something that you can't do with the i1 Display Studio. So if at any point you're going to get a hardware calibrated display in the future, that is just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's get started here. The first thing I'm going to do is launch i1 Studio. We'll have a check for update. I already have the latest version installed, so we're not going to worry too much there. Now that we have i1 Studio launched, there's a few things that we need to do in the very beginning. We need to select the device that we want to use to run a calibration on our screen. In this case, you can easily pick between the color spectrophotometer or the colorimeter, as you see there. Because I have the color spectrophotometer already linked to display, notice when I click the other one, it's still showing the yellow there because it's already detecting the device. A couple of things too is that on the screen right now, you see a silhouette of the device that is darker that is the old device. So for instance, if you have the Color Monkey photo, it will also work with this new i1 Studio software, or if you have the Color Monkey display, it will also work with this i1 Studio software too to run a calibration or any printer profiling for that case. But in this case, we are going to focus on display calibration. One more thing to note is that I am going to be using the x i1 Studio Color Spectrophotometer to run this demo. Note that if you have the x i i1 Display Studio, the process of, that you have to go through in this case is going to be very similar to what I'm doing right now. There is a few more intricacy that gets added when you're using a color spectral photometer, but you're going to see that in just a moment here. Click on Display Calibration. It will take you to this screen. Make sure that you have the BenQ or your external display, in this case, selected. It will tell you to display the serial number. In this case, you can pick different modes that you want to run a calibration on. And if you ever want to go in and you want to tinker around, you can do that by clicking on custom. When you click on custom, all the settings below are going to be available for you to change. For example, you can go in and change the white point. In this case, I always recommend that you leave the white point at D65 or 6500 Kelvin because it is a color spectrum that our eyes can see the most color. And when we are doing color critical work or color critical edit, we want to make sure that we see all the color if possible. So D65 is going to be best in this case. Also, something to keep in mind too is that D65 will also work for printing as well, provided that you are comparing and viewing in print 
under the proper light source. In this case, you want to make sure that you have a light bulb that is calibrated to 6500 Kelvin when you're viewing your print against the display. Next up, under luminance. You have a lot of value here that you can go in and set. The value that I recommend that you set this to is between 80 to 100 candela. Any value between there is going to be fine. It's going to work great for photography, especially if you're doing print, or if you're not doing print for that matter, you still want to calibrate to this luminance value. This way, your display is set to a standard brightness and it's not brighter or darker than any of the other average screens that are out there. This value, amazingly enough, will work well for video too. So if you're doing video work, 80 to 100 candela will also work great if you're doing most of your videos in Rec. 709 color space. In this case, I am going to set my display brightness to 100 candela. And next up is a tonal response on the tonal curve. In this case, I'm just going to choose a default 2.2 gamma. Essentially, what I'm doing is set most of these settings at the default value. But the reason why I really want to go and click custom here is to set the luminance value. Because if you don't do that, this is going to be a bad calibration because what you're seeing your screen will look great but when you print something out or when you get your print back from a lab it's always going to turn out darker than what you're seeing on the screen so make sure you come in and run custom calibration in this case in order for you to be able to set your display luminance to the proper level next up i'm not even going to check flare correction from there simply click on next now because i'm using a color spectral photometer is going to ask me, as you see here, to calibrate the color spectral photometer. This is something that it won't ask you if you're using the i1 Display Studio. A couple other things here before I run the calibration, I want to make sure that I have automatic display control unchecked. This way the program doesn't talk to the display and try to adjust the brightness for me. And secondly, I want to make sure that I have adjust brightness, contrast, and RGB gain manually checked. This way I can go in and it will give me a graph in terms of where my colors are and where my brightness are. Okay, so now that I have that done, what we're gonna do here is take our color spectral photometer and we are going to point this down to where the sun is. This is its internal white calibration point. You can do either one or two things by pressing the button on the color spectral photometer device or pressing calibrate here. Either one will get you through the exact same result. The other thing too that I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to put this color spectral photometer in this hang pouch here so that I can hang this from the screen and run the calibration. Careful not to press the button again as you put this in. The best thing that you can do though is probably put this in before and then do the calibration. But in this case, I'm living life on a wild side so I'll just do this. Zip it up like so. Now you have this device in the pouch, but you want to make sure you do here is open this aperture up so that the sensor can see through the case. If you don't do this, the sensor will not be able to read what it's seeing on the screen. So this is opening the aperture up so that the color spectral photometer can read the colors that are on the screen. From there is telling us that we need to rotate this device to the measuring position. So we need to point it there. As you see, that's where the sensor is. From here, you want to click on start measurement process. Let me zoom out a little bit. And it's telling us very simply to make sure that we tilt the display back, number one. And we have this device laying absolutely flat on the display without it bulging out or anything like that. So I'm going to make sure that that happens now that I have the device laying flat on the screen. Under here, under profile my display, I'm going to have contrast and brightness checked. Something to keep in mind about these display, depending on your make, model, and manufacture of display, many times you will have the ability to go in and manually control the RGB input and output of your display, and there is a menu called Custom Color. If you decide you want to play with that option, you can come in here and check RGB control, and that will show you the RGB control for the display as you change them, and it will tell you to line those up. Personally, from my testing on this BenQ PD3220U, I find that the custom mode doesn't always produce a better result than the pre-calibrated mode from the factory, so I'm going to use the pre-calibrated mode here. Another thing to note about this BenQ PD3220U is that there are two modes that BenQ have calibrated this display from the factory with greater uniformity, sRGB and Display P3. In this case, I'm going to be running my calibration in Display P3 because I want to be able to use the largest color gamut possible. From there, Click on next. 
What the device is doing right now is that it's running a preliminary calibration to get the display brightness. It will show us a display brightness in just a moment here on the chart, and we would then have to go in and adjust the brightness of display so that it matches with the target that we want. In this case, the target value that we want is 100. The measured value right now is 89. So let's bring that up a little bit. <clears throat> For my display here, the brightness of 57 corresponds to the measured white luminance of about 100. This is, looks pretty good to me. I will go ahead and click on next. From here, the device will start to run its calibration. It will measure all the color patches, in this case, 118 patch. For those of you that have the more pro version of this software, the i1 profiler, and you're using the Pro X Bright devices, this is very similar to running the i1 profiler software in basic mode, or even if you use the advanced mode, if you click on the small patch, is also 118 patches. So it's measuring about the same amount of patch set. The difference is that in the i1 Profiler and x -Bright Pro devices, you have a lot more control and you can measure a larger amount of patches in this case. I'm going to have this run. And when it's done, I'm gonna come back and show you how you can save the profile. Now that this calibration is almost done, there's only a few more patches left. From here, it's going to do one final verification. It is flashing some colors to make sure that the colors are looking great. Once we're done, I'll take the device down from the screen, close the aperture up on the bottom there, and just leave this device hook up to your computer still, because if you pull this out, well, this device acts as a dongle to authenticate the software. So if you pull the device out, it won't really work anymore for the calibration, and you have to start over again. So make sure you don't pull that out. From here, simply enough, click next. And this is where you can come in and name your profile. In this case, I'm gonna return my screen back to normal position as well. Leave the name as a default if you like. In this case, because I'm only doing this calibration for this demo, I'm gonna leave the name as a default. This is where you would choose the version of your ICC profile. If you're on a Macintosh, feel free to leave that at version four. If you're on PC, definitely come in and change this to version two because in Windows, Version 4 has a lot of conflicts. And lastly, profile reminder. You can set this so that it will remind you on the screen, it will pop up saying, hey, you need to reprofile your screen. Personally, because I'm doing a demo right now, I am going to set this to none. Another thing to note too is that because these LCD displays are so good nowadays, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to go in and recalibrate this as often as you would on those big CRT uh, screen like you know in the past. So that's just something to keep in mind there. From here, click Save Profile. It will generate the profile. It will tell you that the profile has been generated. And we're done. You can see the before and after calibration. In this case, if the profile is pretty decent or in the screen is pretty decent, you're going to see some slight changes, but it won't be drastic at all. Click on Home, and you are done with the display calibration. If you watch my other videos on how to use a x -Rite i1 profiler to run a calibration on your screen, you will notice that there's a lot more settings and a lot more controls you can do, number one. And secondly, you can also run a display profile validation. And this is something that you can't do with the i1 Studio. So that's just something to keep in mind between the device that you want to purchase and use in your workflow. Personally, if you are getting a device and if you're doing any printing at all, I think that the x -Rite i1 studio this color spectrophotometer here is a really great device to get because it will calibrate your screen it will work with third-party software but it will also do printer profiling as well so that's just something to keep in mind there anyway i hope that you find this guide on how to use i1 studio to calibrate an external display helpful if you have any questions about this leave them in the comment section below please give this video a like if you find it helpful Subscribe to my channel if you are new and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new guides like this. And until next time, art is right.